Looking at the switchboard itself, we'll look at the components that are standard or pretty much common on most devices. So when you look at a switchboard lineup, metering is optional. You could build an entire switchboard without a single meter in it. However, in most cases today, we are putting more and more metering into a switchboard. However, a switchboard must have a main. That could be a main breaker. It could be a main fusible switch. It could be multiple mains or it could be main lugs only, but there has to be a main device. And then from that point, you have your options of putting distribution. So the distribution can be one of two types. You'll see here in the middle, these are called fixed breakers or individually mounted devices, IMDs. And there are two breakers. This allows us to put large ampere breakers. For example, these could be two 2,000 amp R-frame breakers. They are fixed mounted, which means to take them out, power must be uh, removed from the switchboard, and it's disassembled to remove the breaker from the inside. On the far right, you'll see where it's a combination of group mounted, we, where we have used eyeline breakers. Again, these eyeline breakers can be uh, removed and replaced without disassembling the switchboard. So two options for mounting breakers. Uh, individually mounted in their own separate compartment like the two in the middle or group mounted where multiple breakers share the same bus bars. As far as dimensions, all switchboards, the standard switchboard will be 91 and a half inches tall. That 91 and a half inches includes an inch and a half base channel. This base channel gives the device rigidity, stability, and it also allows for moving it around on the concrete floor and also for leveling it to meet an uneven concrete floor surface. If you look at the switchboard sections, there will usually be a piece of louvered trim at the top and a piece of louvered trim at the bottom. This can range anywhere from nine inches at the top to 19 and a half inches at the bottom. This is for ventilation, this is for airflow, and this is also why a switchboard cannot be sealed up in, for example, a NEMA 12 enclosure, because it must have air. It is a naturally air-cooled device. With those trim pieces removed, we are left with somewhere between 63 and 72 inches of usable space where we can mount fusible switches, individual breakers, or group-mounted breakers. As far as depth goes, the switchboard depth is designed to be as small as possible. Uh, that way it does not take up valuable floor space. So the design, up to 2,500 amps, it will be 24 inches deep. As you go from 25 up to 3,000, up to 4 and 5,000, you'll see that the device gets deeper. And there are also options to go extremely deep should the customer need that for either a wire bending space or conduit entry or access to the lug compartments. Every switchboard will be furnished if it weighs less than 2,500 pounds, and which means it's usually a 3,000 amp or less switchboard. It will be provided with the swingable lifting provisions. So the lifting straps are bolted in, they swing out, and it can be attached to a, a spreader bar uh, and, and chain hoist and lift it into place. If it's an outdoor uh, 3R, NEMA 3R type uh, device, it will not have any lifting provisions because you're not allowed to put holes in the top of a NEMA 3R device. So just reviewing this lesson, we talked about how the switchboard evolved from knife blades mounted to a board, to switches mounted on a board, to breakers in a box with bus bars. We compared the panel board to the switchboard. We looked at the parts and pieces that make up the switchboard. We talked about its function. We compared the different QED switchboards and compared them to switch gear. And finally, we looked at the basic components that every switchboard will have.